Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today I want to do something a little bit different and talk a little bit about surface plates. Cast iron plates versus granite surface plates. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was fortunate enough, I was browsing through uh, Facebook Marketplace and stumbled across a really nice brown and sharp cast iron surface plate uh, that was for sale within about a little over an hour from where I lived at, at a very reasonable price. I contacted the seller, we worked out a deal, and I went and picked this thing up and brought it home. It was during the time, shortly after my surgery, I couldn't really do anything much in the shop. Uh, he was able to load it in my truck. I was able to get some friends to help me unload it and get it into the shop, and it's just kind of been in here ever since. But uh, I posted some pictures of it over on Facebook and Instagram, I think, and there were quite a few interesting questions that came up about these cast iron surface plates, and uh, I thought it'd be interesting to talk a little bit about them, uh, because I think there is a lot of questions about them in general, a lot of misconceptions about them, uh, and a lot of questions, okay, you know, granite versus cast iron. Uh, where and when would you want to use each one, etc. So first off, let's just kind of back up a little bit and talk about these cast iron plates in general. Back in the early days of uh, machining and everything else, these cast iron surface plates were the standard as far as a surface plate goes. Uh, this is pretty much what was available. If you look in the Brown and Sharp catalog from you know World War II or before, uh, they offered these in many different sizes, from very small bench top plates to uh, huge plates, plates even bigger than this one I've got behind me, which is uh, three foot by six foot. I mean, it was easy to find or see these things in big shops, four foot by eight foot, even bigger uh, than that. And uh, basically they were cast iron, uh, they were usually probably surfaced on a metal planer, and then they would have been scraped in uh, flat to another surface plate, or in some cases they may have also been lapped in, uh, similar to how you would lap in a uh, granite surface plate to get that final accuracy. Most of them were just scraped, uh, quite honestly. And um, these were the standards. These were pretty much what was used in the industry up until World War II. During World War II, uh, there was a shift between using the cast iron surface plates and going to the granite surface plates. Why did that shift occur? It really comes down to material needs. During World War II, there was incredible demands for any kind of metals, uh, cast iron, steels, brasses, bronzes, all that stuff was needed for the war effort. It was needed to make tanks, airplanes, battleships, whatever, bombs to drop over on our, our enemies during World War II. There was a tremendous need for cast iron. And uh, the, the need was so great that they were looking for alternatives to cast iron for many different things, many different uses, so that they could use the cast iron to going into the war effort. During this time, really even before then, they were using some granite surface plates, but during World War II is when the shift really occurred and where people started using the granite surface plates more than the cast iron surface plates. Uh, and since World War II, the granites have pretty much become the standard. Uh, the cast iron's a little bit more obscure. Um, I don't know of anybody that's really mass producing cast iron surface plates anymore. Uh, there may be somebody out there on a small scale market or on smaller plates, but really granite has become the king as far as surface plates. So if you don't understand what a surface plate is, a surface plate is a very flat plane that is used as a measuring or a reference surface. Uh, you know, a really good surface plate such as a cast iron or as this granite surface plate when it has been lapped in and it is a double A grade, the highest quality, this whole plate will be flat to within about 50 millionths of an inch of any given point on there. The same standards applied to the cast iron surface plates as well. Um, the question that I get a lot of times is, okay, you know, I think in today's world, most people are familiar with the granite plates, but you know, is there still a use or for the uh, cast iron plates? Are they accurate? Are they uh, as good? Are they better? Are they worse? 
et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. At the end of the day, uh, there are some interesting things. And, and like so many things in life, there is no real clear answer as to which one is best, the cast iron or the granite. Uh, both of them have pros. Both of them have cons. Uh, I will say, though, at the end of the day, the granite has remained the standard and has remained the standard for a reason. It is a very, very good um, reference surface. They're relatively cheap. It's a lot cheaper to make a granite plate than it is a cast iron plate. Uh, but in some situations, the cast iron plates do actually have some advantages. Um, I think a lot of times cast iron in general kind of gets a bad rap uh, as being an inferior material. A lot of machinists don't like working with cast iron. It's messy. Uh, and, and I think a lot of people in their minds look at cast iron. They kind of look down on cast iron as a material. But cast iron actually is an excellent material for many different things. And one of the things where it really works much better than steel is its ability to stay flat, its ability to stay in a, a, a in the case of the surface plate, a plane, in the case of a machine, if you had a lathe or a machine that had a cast iron base, that machine will stay very, very flat as long as it is at a constant temperature. Uh, and the cool thing about cast iron is, is that this plate, when it was brand new, and I have not tested to see how flat this is yet. Uh, it looks like it's the original surface, so I'm sure it's probably got some, some issues. We could clean it up and very easily scrape it back in and get it back in, I'm sure. At some point in time, I will compare it over here on the, on the uh, surface plate, which I know is a flat surface, and we'll compare them and see if that needs to be done. But when this was new and this was a flat plate, you know, if this plate was at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, don't know what that is in Celsius. You can do the math if you want to. But if this plate was at 60 degrees Fahrenheit uh, and it was perfectly flat, if you come in here and you change the temperature of this plate to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, as long as the temperature is throughout, if you don't have a temperature gradient in your part, it's still going to be dead nuts flat. The flatness is not affected by temperature. Uh, now, the caveat to that is, is that if you came in here with a uh, heat vent above this thing and you were blowing heat down on the surface and the top was, say, 70 degrees and the bottom was 60 degrees, yes, it can distort, it can bend a little bit out of flatness. But as soon as the temperature comes back with an equilibrium, it's going to go back to being flat again. So. It's not dependent on the temperature, it's dependent on the part being completely the same temperature, which is why so many machine tools are made out of cast iron. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, work done looking at even a cast iron machine that was in a building that burned down, and that machine got extremely hot. As long as that, uh, the castings were heated up and then allowed to cool back down, uh, you know, at a natural pace, not coming in there with a fire hose and cooling it down very quickly, but allowed to cool down, you know, fairly slowly, it will go back to being flat again. Uh, you take a machine that's made out of steel and that will not happen. It will distort, it will bend. And it will even bend from one temperature to another temperature. You're liable to get differences in the flatness. Granite, by comparison, uh, will also stay relatively flat as it changes temperatures, and it has similar issues where, you know, if, if the bottom of the plate is cooler than the top of the plate, you're going to probably temporarily distort it a little bit, but as soon as it comes into equilibrium, it will stay relatively flat, but not as flat as the cast iron plates. It's pretty well known that, um, you know, if you've got a plate that is not in a climate-controlled shop such as mine, you know, right now when I'm filming this, it's January, it's probably about 60 degrees in the shop. Uh, you come back in the shop in the summertime, uh, and it'll probably be about, you know, 75, 80 degrees ambient temperature in the shop. This plate's going to change temperatures. And what happens if you measure this with an autocollimator or a laser or uh, uh, very accurate levels, 
what will happen is, is this, this plate will either crown slightly or go convex slightly, depending on the temperature. It's very, very small, but it is measurable, and it is a difference that can, will happen. The cast iron plate, on the other hand, will stay pretty much exactly flat, again, as long as it's at a constant temperature. Advantages and disadvantages between cast iron and granite. Um, you know, probably the biggest thing that you can run into is if you come in here and let's say I were to have a uh, piece of hardened, uh, you know, something that I was um, using on this plate and I dropped it on the plate, it's going to put a ding in this plate. And when it does, it's going to raise a burr. If I drop that over here on this granite plate, it happens. Uh, what's going to happen when it does it is this is going to actually chip the surface but it doesn't raise a burr. The hole will go beneath the surface, whereas over here it will actually raise up a little ding. So that is one advantage that granite has. This plate here is a well-used plate. It's been around for quite a while. And if you run your hand over it, there are multiple places on here where you can fill a little hole where there's a little chip in the, the surface. That does not affect the use of this as a surface plate because that chip is beneath the surface, it's not on top of the surface. Again, if you did it on this plate, you would raise a little burr. Now, it's usually something that's fairly easy to fix. You can come in here with a stone and stone it back down and it'll, it'll be fine. In fact, I, I stoned this plate right after I got it and there are several little dings on it. And right there where that ding was, when I stoned it, you can see the shiny stuff around it. I pretty much knocked it off, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but anyway, just a little bit of talking about granite versus cast iron. Now, this cast iron plate that I picked up, um, how, what am I going to use it for? Am I going to use it for a surface plate? Honestly, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make a uh, frame that this will sit on, put it on some casters, and kind of use it as a portable uh, a work table that I can move around the shop. I can use it as a surface plate if I'm say over on the lathe or something and need a, uh, you know, a surface plate that I or a surface that I can measure off of. I'm going to make a wooden top that fits down on, on top of this, so I'm just using it as a table. We're not damaging the surface. Uh, a, again, at some point in time, I do want to flip this thing over, blew it up, and just see how flat it is. Uh, I suspect it's probably in decent shape. It doesn't appear to be anything major wrong with it. And uh, at some point in time, I will make a decision. Do I just leave it alone, which is what I'm inclined to do. I really kind of like the patina on this. If it's out by a good bit, I may opt to go ahead and uh, uh, scrape it back in. If it's out really bad, I may send it off and have it reground and then scrape it back in and get it back down to uh, where I have a really good surface uh, plate that I can use as a reference uh, moving forward. But I'm hoping that I can just leave the surface alone. If you're interested in a lot of this type of information and uh, you know flatness and really geeking out on, on uh, precision measurements, one book that I highly recommend is this book right here, Foundations of Mechanical Accuracy. It's written by Wayne Moore. Moore uh, is uh, in the family from Moore Tool Company. Uh, they're actually still in business. This book is still in print. You can order it off of their website. At least you could a year or two ago when I ordered my copy. I think it's still in print. Uh, but this is an excellent, excellent book just on mechanical accuracy of machines, kind of going all the way back to the very basics, the beginning of time, uh, how they made the very first surface plates, uh, where you basically lapped three of them together to get them, uh, to get them uh, you know, flat, and building off of that to get to where we are today in, in the world of accuracy. It's a fascinating book. Uh, it's a little bit technical, but if you geek out on, on accuracy and really high precision, it's a good read. There's a lot of information in this book on the advantages of cast iron in machine tool uh, construction. Uh, there's also a good bit in here talking about surface plates and uh, the advantages and disadvantages of, again, cast iron and uh, granite that goes into a lot greater detail. There are still quite a few shops out there that have these old cast iron surface plates in high precision uh, shops and in, in, in shops that 
that are really, really, really getting down and doing this extremely high accuracy measurements and they need a master surface plate in their shop, very often they will get one of these old cast iron plates. And it's in a climate controlled room. It stays exactly the same temperature all the time. And uh, there is an argument that from just a pure straight accuracy standpoint, the cast iron plates can be superior. And in those situations, they would use the cast iron plate as their master plate, and then they would use granite plates to actually work off of. But if they needed to go back to that master, that cast iron plate would still be in the shop. So there is still people out there looking for these and wanting them. Uh, most people that find these now, they turned into a work surface. When I posted that I got this, a lot of people were like, oh man, that'd make a great welding table. And I'm cringing. No, don't use it as a welding table. This is a precision surface. And uh, fortunately, this one here uh, appears to have been taken pretty well care of. There is a tag over on the front of it that this was uh, originally purchased and used by the U.S. Navy, and it was in Pensacola, Florida. Uh, more than likely, this was on the Naval Air Station in Pensacola. Uh, I've been talking with my buddy Adam Booth, and uh, he's kind of jealous that I picked this thing up because his grandfather was a machinist at the uh, Naval Air Station in Pensacola. There is a pretty good chance that his grandfather might have actually used this plate at some point in time, which is really cool, I think, and Adam thinks as well. Uh, but again, my plans is, is I'm going to put this on a rolling cart and have a good work table that I can easily move around the shop to where I'm working at and use it either as a surface plate or again put a wooden top on here and just use it as a work table depending on what my needs are at any given time. But anyway, just a little bit about this. Uh, this plate, uh, I don't think I mentioned before, 24 inches by 48 inches, so two foot by four foot. Uh, my big surface plate in the back, back here by comparison, is three foot by six foot. Um, I use this with a lot of larger parts, so having this large plate has proven to be invaluable. I'll be honest, I, I really kind of wish that I had maybe a four by eight plate in the shop in some cases, but at the same time, uh, I don't know that I want to give up the real estate to bring one that in that big into the shop. This one really suits my needs for most uh, most situations, and for most people, a smaller plate is probably all you need unless you're putting big machine parts on it like I constantly am. It's really nice to have this large surface plate. And this four foot by two foot, I think will also be a handy size uh, to have in the shop that I can use uh, along those lines as well. So guys, uh, I know I spent a lot of talking, uh, a lot of information thrown at you, cast iron versus uh, granite, you know, which is best. There's probably not a clear answer to that question that really depends on your application and what you're going to use it for. But I will say that generally speaking, the granite plates have become the standard. The granite plates are sufficient for the vast majority of applications. Uh, if you get an opportunity to pick up a cast iron plate like this and you have a need for a surface plate, there is absolutely nothing wrong with these. They're great and uh, they're really cool to have. But from a practical standpoint, the granite plates probably make the most sense in most shops uh, unless you have a specific need where the cast iron plates are going to prevail. So again, a lot of talking. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Did a little bit of history, a little bit of just pros and cons. Uh, and yeah, a little bit of showing off a cool new toy. Uh, brown and sharp surface plate. I imagine this is probably from World War II era. There are no dates on it. Early 1940s would be my guess as to when this probably came, maybe even a little bit before then, uh, but probably not too far before then. So just interesting to have around and interesting to talk about the differences. Guys, with that, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, greatly appreciated. Uh, hit that bell icon to get notifications when new videos are posted. And as always, a big, huge thank you out there to all the supporters of my site through Patreon, PayPal, etc. Uh, we really couldn't bring all the content that we do to you uh, without your help. And with that, guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Hopefully be over my surgical issues that I dealt with and back to working in the shop here very, very quickly. We'll catch you on the next video.